Just in China has joined Russia in speaking out against alleged war crimes committed by Australian forces. Spokesperson for China's Foreign Ministry, Zhao Lijian, posted this tweet saying, shocked by murder of Afghan civilians and prisoners by Australian soldiers, we strongly condemn such acts and call for holding them accountable. Now, that has been blurred out. We've just blurred out the image of a child there, but joining me to talk about this is Phil Curry, Australian Financial Review <coughs> political editor. Um, Pretty crass, mm. pretty graphic. Look, the report was a, a shocking one, but um, Australia is owning up to things yes. here yes. and meeting this head on. And yeah. you know, where does China sit on yeah. human rights, well, well, for that's example? The, that, that's the key difference. And you're getting lectured by China and Russia. You know, give me a break. Um, so the two of the biggest transgressors in the world on human rights. What, what we did in Afghanistan, or allegedly did was atrocious, but the point is we only know about it is because, you know, a, we were allowed to report it in this country and then it was investigated and it's been called out at a government level and now we'll be prosecuted as a government level. So that's, you know, apart from the scale, you know, it's you know, it's a small number of people. It's not doesn't excuse it, but mm. it's not widespread. In China, this sort of thing is state-sanctioned, you know, against the Uyghurs. You can't write about it, you can't report about it, it's covered up and they deny it and they're never going to prosecute anyone for it. And, you know, you can say the same again for the Russians. They still haven't owned up to MH17. So I don't think we need to be lectured uh, by the, these two clowns. But the point is, you know, it does. it is serious in terms of, um, you know, China's just... Yeah, but, you know, as, as the officials tell you off the record, Tom, they hate us, and I think it's becoming more and more obvious. Uh, well, this, now, is, which, this is sanctioned, and this is from the foreign ministry. Foreign ministry, yeah, this yeah. is not just a quick, mm -hmm. you know, Some this is to, mocked yeah. up, this yeah. has taken time to get yeah. the Australian and Afghan yeah. flags there. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's obviously intended to get the most uh, evocative mm. response to it as well. Mm. This is China saying... To, to them, I mean, where do we sit on their list of enemies right now? Are we well, number one? Well, it's, you know, pretty high up there, aren't we? I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're not pretending. This is the thing. We're in this silly little game at the moment where the government has finally started talking about maybe there's a bigger agenda here than maybe these trade claims are trumped up. <laughs> you know, they, they know behind the scenes what's really going on, but they're still tippy-toeing around. Whereas the Chinese, they don't care. They're putting out lists saying this is why we're doing it because you're not doing one, all of these 14 things. You know, to infringe on your own sovereignty, but they, they don't care. Not, they don't care with nicety. Um, they're blunt about their motives. Their motives are using trade or economic coercion as a weapon um, to try and force us to, to, to you know, soften our, our, our protections against our sovereignty. Uh, and importantly, make an example of us and warn others off doing yeah, the same yeah. thing. And, and that's clearly the case is, here. And that is a case. I mean, you'll find, you know, sort of at official level, people believe Australia has caused... For, is a small, relatively small country but it's caused China an inordinate amount of trouble. Um, you know, we led the way on Huawei, for example. You know, people like to say we were following the Americans. We weren't. We were sort of, the view is we did that off our own bat and everyone followed us. So they can punish us. We can't punish them. We don't have the economic capacity or even the military capacity to, to you know, make them worried. Uh, so we, we have been used and made an example of, and this is quite extraordinary. I mean, for, you know, I mean, for a foreign government to put up a tweet like that and mock it up, I mean, they're off their rocker, aren't they? So d does the list they sent out give uh, the Australian government some cover? When you see things yeah. such as, oh, a, a media reporting on things yeah. and having a go at Aspie and, and politicians speaking out, I mean, anyone else is going to go, yeah, well, of course they're going yeah, to which do one, that. Which one of the, well, Guess what? You're not a communist yeah. dictatorship. Ch China is basically saying unless you muzzle your press um, and unless you undo all these pieces of legislation which are designed to protect your sovereignty against interference by us, mm. we're going to punish you. That's what they're saying, and, and they're admitting that in that list. Um, yeah, an incredibly dumb and stupid thing to do from you know, a diplomatic standpoint because it just shows that um, you know, they're, they're trade, the, the so-called trade complaints they have about our coal not stacking up environmentally or something wrong with their lobster are just rubbish. Yeah. You know, they, they've admitted they're rubbish. They've admitted this is their, this is their true... Um, and every time that mouthpiece, the Global Times, goes off and says, you know, we're going to poke you in the eye or kick you in the bum or whatever they say, you know, they, they, they're admitting to it. So, so here's part of the list. The top one there, inquiring into COVID-19, mm. this is apparently the jumping off point for Labor. And they say, mm. why did we lead this? Now, mm. you can debate whether we led it or not. It was certainly multilateral. Mm. Is there a point? I mean, if the federal government had its time over, would it not be as outspoken as on the front foot? Oh, do you yes, say yes, yes? I reckon of all the fourteen, that one. You know, there's nothing wrong with calling for it, but why do we have to call for it? And I suspect if Scott Morrison had his time again, he probably, you know, 
leave it to the, the Americans or the Europeans to do it, even though they probably wouldn't do it because they'll say weak. Um, but is that, I mean, let's look at that from another point of view. Maybe, you know, is it good to leave? People say, call up. Well, you've got to... If no-one else was going to do it, is it better that we did it and yeah. versus nobody? Well, I don't know. I mean, was it going to happen whether we led, led the calls? or We might we, never know. We could have used backdoor, backdoor diplomacy to get someone else to call for it. You know, we could have got the English to do it or someone like that. But it's... Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think that is... I mean, it's, principally, it's right. I mean, it did, it did originate in China. Um, there's nothing wrong. But did we need to take the heat for calling for it? I suspect not. I suspect the PM probably would be more judicious this time, second time around. I guess the question here on the impacts on Australia, trade, red wine, or all wine, mm. I should say, the latest one, but can Australia go about getting this sort of coalition of, of trading partners willing to call out China? It, it gets impossible for China to punish everyone. They still need... You know, Xi Jinping's got this longer-term philosophy mm. that China can be this internal economy yeah. and not have to rely on other economies. Yeah. But right now, that's not the case. I mean, they're not shutting out our iron ore, for example. Not yet. Not um, yet. They need it now. But c c yeah. do you think there's a genuine hope? It's oh. going to take years, but that other countries will go, well, we can't just let them pick us off one by one. Let's stand here. I, I don't know. I, I don't think so, Tom. It's a greedy world. You know, one country's misfortunes, another's opportunity. We saw how quickly Donald Trump could have thrown us under a bus when ending his own trade war with China by getting them to buy stuff off him that they would have normally bought off of us. You know, the alliance didn't amount to a hell of beans when it came to that. So I, I, don't, I don't think this thing will happen. I think most countries, if you're wise, will, will be looking for, you know, and it's not going to happen in a short time. It's going to take a long, long time but to diversify your markets. Mm. Um, but whilst China's buying stuff, you'll sell it to them because they're a big client and they pay a lot of money. But, um, yeah, I, I can't see it. I can't see someone saying, hey, look, we're not going to sell stuff to them either out of solidarity to you and do their own farmers in the eye. I just can't see that happening. No. So, I'm, I'm, look, not, I'm not in the capitalist world. No, no, no. Look, I, I guess more, more along the lines of, um, you know, perhaps trying to help Australian uh, out selling mm. things to other countries. But anyway, mm. uh, just finally briefly... IR um, changes, expecting this next week. Mm. Uh, I mean, the, the only sort of murmurings from Scott Morrison are that it won't excite either side mm. too much, that being He's, the unions and, and yeah. business. Look, he, he wants... The Prime Minister was going to put up a package next week. He wants to pass the Senate. So there's no point going too far, you know, and, and also, you know, keep his own side happy either and not be too timid, so... Well, that's... There's going to be a point in doing yeah, it, right? that's right. So, look... He, he said at the outset they're looking, they've, they've picked five areas where there's common agreement that improvement is needed, whether it's enterprise agreements or casualisation or uh, the Greenfields Agreement. There's, you know, Labor is principally in support of all these areas in terms of reform is needed. Tony Burke said last week if, it's, if the legislation reflects the spirit of the talks that were held between unions and business, Labor wouldn't have a problem with it. They'll, they'll put it off to a Senate committee just to make sure there's no devil within. But... Um, on um, the better off overall test, for example, which underpins in enterprise agreements. Everyone agrees that thing doesn't work. It's too rigid. Paul Keating said that last week on the 7.30 report. Uh, he said you should go back to the no disadvantage test that he introduced. The government's not going back that far. They're going to keep the boot test, but they'll, the industrial umpire will have more flexibility in interpreting that. So it won't be a case where you've got an agreement for 3,000 workers, one of which is going to go backwards by five bucks or the whole agreement collapse. Right. So there'll be more... That's, that's the rigidity. The, that's you you still the, have the, yeah. the majority better off, yeah. which is yeah, a good yeah. result for them. There's the famous Coles agreement that the yeah, yeah. because you know, one guy on a Thursday night right. went backwards. So, so yeah, and, and that's what PM was saying in his speech a couple of weeks ago. So, if, you know, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see it next week, but it's sort of typical pragmatic Morrison and get a result, have a result rather than a fight. Time will tell. <laughs> Indeed. Hill <laughs> Curry, thank you.